So, hello, am I audible? Uh, yes, Ram, I can hear you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So, Dr. Fatima Nuri, I is the Assistant Professor of English, Government uh, Jagatar and Girls PG College, University of Allahabad, Prayagraj. And she has been a uh, Fulbright Fellow, a very good scholar. Her qualification that she has completed her PhD degree from University of Allahabad. And her specialization is in the poetry of Aga Shahi Dali. Uh, Ms. Nuri has a number of good papers in journal, in international and national journals of a reputed reputation. And she has part also participated in several seminars, conferences, and workshops. So uh, on this note, I mean, I invite Dr. Fatima Nuri to start her session. Ma'am, now it's your turn, please. Uh, thank you so much, Ram, for introducing me and for inviting me. I also would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, your principal, Dr. Savita Bharadwaj, uh, for allowing uh, the Department of English, uh, Rajki Mahila Snatakuttar Mahavidyale Kazipur, to hold this uh, occasion. And I think we should also thank your head of the department, uh, Professor Shailen Yadav. And uh, I would also like to uh, thank the co-convener of the uh, this event. Uh, I think that's Dr. Abhishek Kumar. So thank you uh, to the Department of English for inviting me here. And uh, I think the students are very, very kind. A lot of them I see have joined. That's a huge number, 33 students from master's class who have joined. So um, without much ado, I will get going with the lecture. Uh, uh, I have done my PhD on Aga Shahidali, so I may speak a lot more than I'm actually required to. So, uh, Abhi, yes, ma'am, we uh, expect that. Okay, we are ready okay. for that, ma'am. Uh, okay. But I believe uh, the poem that has uh, uh, that is prescribed in the syllabus of the students is a small poem and a very simple poem. So, what I... Uh, I'm going to do today is I have a PPT to share and you should allow me to share it. I think you uh, yeah, sure, so, have uh, So, but what I can, will do is I will talk a little bit about Aga Shahid Ali as the poet and um, yes, as a person. Now you can share then... your PPT because now it's allowed. Okay. Uh, it seems to be some kind of a problem in my. Ma'am, you can share your screen. So open that. That would be visible. Acha, share the screen. Uh, so, you can see my screen? Yeah, sure, ma'am. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is uh, I will simply uh, talk about Aga Shahidali as the poet. And uh, then I will concentrate more on... Okay. I will concentrate more on the poem that is prescribed in the syllabus. And then perhaps yes, we can uh, uh, um, move on to the greater thematics and then the question answers if the students have them. So uh, 
is the orientation right <coughs> ma'am please uh, make it horizontal okay Are we okay yes, now? Sure. Yeah, sure, ma'am. Sure. And am I also visible? No, ma'am. You're not visible. Okay. So uh, this is the poet Aga Shahid Ali. And uh, Aga Shahid Ali is considered one of the major voices in the Indian poetry, especially the post-independence poetry. 1947, when we gained independence, हमारे पास कुछ लोग ऐसे बचे जो कि अंग्रेजी भाषी ही थे और उन्होंने अंग्रेजी में ही लिखना चूज किया दे चोज टू राइट इन इंग्लिश एंड वी हैव यू नो वी हैव मलयालम लिटरेचर वी हैव बंगाली लिटरेचर वी हैव उर्दू लिटरेचर हिंदी लिटरेचर संस्कृत लिटरेचर इन द सेम मैनर इंडिया एज अ नेशन ऑल्सो रिकोगनाइज वॉट इज नोन एज द इंडियन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर so we have people contributing from different states from different languages from different cultural backgrounds who constitute as indian english poets now aga shahid ali ka uh, uh, position is a little tricky in the sense that he later on does not identify himself as an indian so that's uh, 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 something that uh, you know we can talk about or discuss a little later but uh, he belonged he was born in uh, um, new delhi in the year 1949 and uh, then he was educated at uh, the university of kashmir shrinagar where he his family lived and survived and then uh, for his graduation he came down to the university of delhi and he also taught there for a while at the hindu college and uh, it was only in the year 1975 that he leaves india and goes for uh, earning a masters degree in english to the us and uh, in us he was uh, he uh, um, um, after his completes his masters he goes for a phd which was on uh, ts elliot as the editor and uh, he gets that degree from the pennsylvania state university 1984 and then later on he uh, uh, was used to writing poetries from a very very young age so he earns himself what in us is called the master of fine arts mfa in creative writing so that's a course that a lot of you know, uh, um, um, universities in america offer they call it the master of fine arts and he earns this degree from the university of arizona in the year 18 Uh, 1985 and it was during this time 1985 ke mein ek saal ka course tha ye fine arts ka uh, fine arts in creative writing so what they do over the in that course is they teach you how to get into creative writing they teach you how to write poetry or novels or short stories or plays or whatever so many uh, universities offer that kind of a course so it was during this time when he was doing his masters in fine arts after completing his phd in ts elliot that uh, uh, the half inch himalaya books comes into being jo half inch himalaya ka uh, um, pura uh, concept hai jo puri poetry ka collection hai wo master of fine arts ka basically dissertation tha jo ki unhone apni degree complete karne ke liye compose kari thi and uh, uh, he gets a very positive response on that dissertation and then he finally decides to get it published which was published as the half inch himalayas so uh, and shahid was a very prolific uh, not very prolific but he was a uh, you know uh, more than a regular writer in the sense that he was devoted to writing creative uh, uh, pieces and uh, he did write a few analytical pieces as well but he was basically a poet who knew that he would be concentrating on uh writing poetry uh ram will you just allow me one minute i think i've been sharing the wrong ppt just just one minute ha huh? okay sure ma'am
इसकी आवाज नहीं है क्या इसमें भी तो वो होता है
Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And now I cannot share the screen. It's allowed, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you have unmuted me, but you just have to allow me to share the screen as well. It is already allowed. Okay, I'm going once again. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so here is uh, Agha Shahid Ali and uh, we have wasted a lot of time. So what I will do is I will quickly jump on to the poem. Uh, now the poem I said was published in the year uh, 1987 from the Wesleyan Press, which is a very reputed press for uh, uh, any poetry collection to be published. And this was a part of his uh, um, MFA thesis, the Master of Fine Arts thesis. Now, the very first poem in that collection is called Postcard from Kashmir, which is also a part of your syllabus, I believe. Uh, this is a very small and a simple poem, but uh, the poem talks about the nostalgia a man who has migrated from his homeland to a different nation and settled there for good uh, feels. The, the nostalgia, the, law, the sense of loss, and the sense of longing one feels for uh, the homeland. And no matter how difficult the terrain of your homeland is, no matter how complicated your history is, no matter how uh, 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 you know, good your life may be for uh, a person moving from Kashmir or New Delhi, to America, obviously, the life offers a lot of better prospects. America is a well-developed nation. It offers more in terms of economic prosperity. It offers. It also has a very beautiful, uh, uh, you know, scenic and a very bucolic uh, uh, um, geography as well. And yet, we find the poet longing for his home. So this is the basic idea, the basic theme of the poem where he is talking about how he is hit and hit very suddenly with a very strong pang of nostalgia the moment he receives a postcard from Kashmir. Now, postcards, uh, the students these days may not be very familiar with them, but I'm pretty sure they have seen it in their lives at some point or the other. Abhi bhi kabhi ap kisi gift shop mein ya phir ap kisi stationery shop mein jayen ya phir ap kisi aisi jagha par jayen jo ki us shahar ka sabse main tourist attraction hota hai. So, we have postcards and postcards are basically uh, when, you know, uh, texting and these uh, immediate photo sharing were not available for us. Uh, people used to click beautiful pictures on one side of these postcards. They had uh, a very beautiful picture of something that a place represents or some kind of an idea or some kind of a picture. और उसके पीछे पता लिखा जाता था और एक साइड एक कॉलम खाली होता था जिसमें लोग अपने प्रियजनों को अपने रिलेटिव्स को अपने फ्रेंड्स को भेजते थे राइटिंग द मैसेजेस दैट यू नो वी आर मिसिंग यू वी आर हियर एंड वी आर थिंकिंग अबाउट यू तो इट वाज अ ओपन मैसेज जो पोस्टकार्ड पे मैसेज लिखा रहता था वो हर कोई पढ़ सकता था और पोस्टकार्ड एक बहुत ही यू नो पब्लिक अनाउंसमेंट ऑफ अफेक्शन होता था सो दिस इज द ईयर 1987 व्हेन द पोस्टकार्ड वाज स्टिल प्रेवेलेंट दिस इज हाउ पीपल स्टेड इन कनेक्शन विद ईच अदर एट दैट पॉइंट तो पोस्टकार्ड जो है वो एक 
पब्लिक फॉर्म ऑफ अफेक्शन होता था फॉर फॉर इंस्टेंस यू नो दीज डेज यू Uh, have uh, um, you know you send pictures to each other to your friends sharing you look i've been here you may make instagram reels or post out those kind of things to tell the world that uh, uh, i'm here and i may be thinking about you but postcards were basically a personal communication which one person sends to the other or usme ye idea hota tha ki hum yahan par baithe hain aur yahan ka postcard humne aapko bheja hai और यहाँ बैठकर हमें आपकी याद आ रही है तो पोस्ट कार्ड पर्सनल अफेक्शन का भी एक प्रतीक होता है सिंबल होता है और साथ में एक एक जो उसका फॉर्म ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन इट इज वेरी पब्लिक इन द सेंस दैट एनी वन हु कैरी इज द पोस्ट कार्ड द होल यू नो पोस्ट ऑफिस पीपल एंड पीपल हु हैंड इट ओवर टू यू विल बी एबल टू रीड वॉट द मैसेज इज So, Aga Shahid Ali, or the poet who was living in and well settled in America in the year 1987, receives this postcard from his homeland, someone, and he does not really name. कि किसने वो postcard भेजा है. He just says कि I have received the postcard. He says Kashmir shrinks in my mailbox. Mailbox is the box in which you receive the. मेल्स मेल्स यानी खत या पत्र या चिट्ठिया या जो भी आपका खत होता है आपने देखा होगा पहले जमाने में लोग अपने घरों के बाहर एक छोटा सा वुडन बॉक्स लगाते थे जिसमें डाकिया आकर खत डाल जाता था तो उस बॉक्स में ही सेस कि कश्मीर जो है वो सिमट कर आ गया इट हज श्रंक इट हज यू नो लाइक अ स्मॉल कैप्सूल दर Huge land, the huge mountains that Kashmir has, they have shrunk into my small little mailbox. And how have they shrunk? He explains in the second line, my home a neat four by six inches. Four by six inches is the side of the postcard. यानि कि एक साइड से वो चार इंच का है, एक साइड से छः इंच का है. And he has uh, uh, and this mountain range or this Kashmir ka scenery, which is printed on that. a uh, a uh, 4 by 6 inch of paper is home to aga shahid ali or the poet so he says that home has been shrunk it has been condensed into a small paper image i always loved neatness carries on ki mujhe hamesha se neatness crisp clear cheeze very uh, with a lot of clarity i always loved it Now I hold the half inch Himalayas in my hand. Half inch Himalayas, why? Because it's a small little picture of Himalayas. It's a postcard of four by six inches, just me. A half inch ka Himalayan mountain range ka picture bhi hai, or maybe it's just the postal stamp from uh, from Kashmir. So he has received a postcard which may be carrying picture of his home, but it definitely carries a postage. स्टैम्प जो कि कश्मीर से निकल कर आया है और उस पोस्टेड स्टैम्प में जो है वो आधे इंच का है हाफ इंच और उसमें हिमालयन रेंज का पिक्चर बना हुआ है सो पोस्ट कार्ड इज वन थिंग एंड पोस्टल स्टैम्प इज अनदर थिंग व्हिच इज कैरीज द पिक्चर ऑफ द हाफ इंच हिमालय तो पोस्ट कार्ड पे पोस्टल स्टैम्प लगाया जाता था जो कि पचास पैसे एक रुपए दो रुपए और अगर इफ यू हैव टू सेंड इट इंटरनेशनली देन समटाइम्स इट वाज लाइक टेन रुपीज और फिफ्टीन रुपीज विच इज अज अमाउंट इन दाइनटीन एटीज सो दैट इज हाउ द द लेटर्स वर सेंट आप पोस्ट ऑफिस को एक कुछ पैसे देते थे उसके बदले में वो एक छोटा सा पोस्टेड स्टैम्प आपके चिट्ठी पर आपके पोस्ट कार्ड पर आपके लेटर पर लगाते हैं और फिर उसको स्टैम्प करते हैं और फिर भेजते हैं सो दैट इज वॉट ही इज रेफरिंग टू आई हैव ऑलवेज लव्ड नीटनेस आई ऑलवेज लव थिंग्स इन अ वेरी क्लियर एंड प्रिसाइज फॉर्म एंड नाउ माय अंटायर होम व्हिच इज अ वेरी यू नो स्पिल्ड आउट आइडिया द होम इज नॉट अ वेरी द होम इज नॉट अ वेरी नीट आइडिया होम बहुत ही क्लीन आइडिया नहीं होता है होम जो होता है वो आपका अपना स्पेस इन द हाउस होता है होम जो होता है वो पूरा आपका घर का स्ट्रक्चर फिजिकल स्ट्रक्चर होता है पर होम आपके घर की बगल की वो सड़क भी होती है होम आपके यू नो पॉपुलर हैंग भी होते हैं होम आपके दोस्त यार भी होते हैं उनके घर और उनके साथ जहां पर आपने पल बिताए हैं वो होते हैं स्पेशली इफ यूज लोकेटेड फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ 
uh, uh, you know residing in a different nation altogether so home for kashmir uh, for the poet is not just his own particular home but the entire region in which he lived his friends his uh, acquaintances his his loved ones uh, uh, all the places that he used to hang out so he says that i have loved neatness and the irony now is that my home has been uh, you know um, uh, um, made into this small little uh, uh, half inch space that is how my home is wrapped up neatly and then he carries on he says this is home and this is the closest i'll ever be to home when i return the colors won't be so brilliant the jhelum waters so clean so ultramarine ultramarine is extreme brilliant blue so this he says ki yahi ghar hai ye postcard jo maine apne haath mein liya hua hai this is the home and then he contradicts himself so the whole line uh, one and a half line uh, has a, a pause in the sense that it has a full stop and he carries on contradicting the very idea that he spells in the first half of the line says this is home yahi ghar hai but next line mein kya kehta hai this is the closest i'll be ever to home that is अब इससे नजदीक घर मेरा और कोई नहीं हो सकता घर यही है और घर सबसे ज्यादा नजदीक अगर मैं घर के आ सकता हूं तो यही है ये पोस्ट कार्ड जो यहाँ पर हिमालय के पिक्चर्स है बिकॉज आई विल नॉट हैव दी यू नो प्रेवलेज ऑफ लुकिंग एट माई हाउस विथ माई ओन आईज आई विल नॉट हैव द प्रेवलेज ऑफ लुकिंग एट द हिमालय फ्रॉम माई ओन आईज and hence i will have to make do i will have to satisfy with this this picture that i have in my hand but then immediately after he has another thought he knows ki home as he impossible jagah bhi nahi hai home is something that i can go and i will go he knows that the the return is possible there is a pos- there is a chance or there is a, a plan because he says when i return he does not say if i return or uh, whenever i will return he says when i return there is a definiteness in his voice he says when i return the colors won't be so brilliant the colors that i see in the postcard or the colors that i remember in my memory they won't be so brilliant brilliant is sharp wo itne zyada chamkeele nahi honge and the jhelum waters so clean so ultra marine and the waters waters of the river jhelum will not be so clean so ultramarine ultramarine is extreme bright blue so he says ki jab main wapas jaunga to shayad cheezein dhundli pad chuki hongi mai wo sare colors jo hain wo utne bright utne brilliant utne extreme blue nahi aayenge shayad jhelum gandi ho chuki hogi shayad jhelum ka pani dal ho chuka hoga that can be because of the passage of time that can be because uh, you know when you receive things in in graphic form when you receive things in a picture form they you can you know tone it up or tone it down but uh, when you see them in actual with after a passage of time thoda waqt guzar jane ke baad jab aap cheezon ko dekhte hain to wo dhundli pad jati hain waqt ke sath unme thoda sa uh, changes aate hain so he says right now the memories that i have or the picture the picture oral representation that i have in front of me in the form of that postage uh, stamp as well as the postcard that will not be as good my home actually will not be as good as it will be uh, when i return jab wapas jaunga to pata nahi cheeze kaisi hongi shayad pani ganda ho chuka ho shayad wahan ke ka barf pighal chuka ho shayad wahan ke log utne zyada chamakdar na ho and basically what he is trying to say is that with the passage of time i will lose that attraction i will lose that affection i will lose that you know affinity with people the connection that i have with people i might lose it and my memory will be a little out of focus in it a giant negative black and white still undeveloped and he says or meri memory apni memory meri yaad will be a little out of focus 
a giant negative black and white still endeavelop so he mentions a metaphor of the uh, uh, you know film roles agar aap uh, uh, aapko ab you guys are pretty young but uh, uh, some of you may have the memory of those handheld uh, cameras jo ki pehle aate the of toshiba ke and canon ke and uh, all those companies where they had a black white uh, kal ka प्लास्टिक का एक फिल्म रोल होता था और जिसको देकर आप अपने पिक्चर्स डेवलप करवाते थे जब जब तक कैमरा फोन्स वर नॉट सो पॉपुलर पीपल यूज टू और या फिर ये आपके व्हाट वी कॉल देम जो डिजिटल कैमरास जो थे ये नहीं आए थे उसके पहले जो कैमरास थे उसमें फिल्म रोल लगाई जाती थी और वो फिल्म रोल डेवलप uh, करके उससे पिक्चर्स निकाले जाते थे तो आप आई थिंक योर पॉपुलेशन इज मे नॉट रियली बी अवेयर ऑफ दैट काइंड ऑफ अ सिस्टम बट दैट इज हाउ यू नो साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी डेवलप एंड दिस इज दाइनटीन एटीज दैट द पोइट इज राइटिंग एंड एटीज में कैमराज इसी तरीके से होते थे सो ही इज रेफरिंग टू हिज मेमरी लाइक दैट आउट ऑफ फोकस कैमरा रोल सर्स की मेरी मेमरी जो है वो ब्लैक एंड व्हाइट होगी आउट ऑफ फोकस होगी बहुत शार्प बहुत ही प्रिसाइज नहीं होगी स्टिल अनडेवलप जैसे कि वो नेगेटिव्स कहते हैं उनको जो छोटे छोटे प्लास्टिक के रोज होते थे जिनमें आप पिक्चर क्लिक करते हैं तो उसके नेगेटिव्स आते थे तो दैट इज वॉट इज रेफरिंग टू एन हीस कि वो अनडेवलप्ड होगा वो एक ब्रिलियंट पिक्चर नहीं होगा जैसे कि पोस्ट कार्ड में है जैसे कि पोस्टर स्टैम्प में है जहां पर शार्प स्टार्क कलर्स हैं बट my memory will be a little out of focus i may not remember things as sharply as i do now that i hold this card in my hand when i return to home my memory will be like the negative it will be a giant negative black and white and still undeveloped i have put a full stop over here but in the original published poem there was no full stop स्टिल अनडेवलप्ड के बाद पोइट अपने उसमें फुल स्टॉप नहीं लगाते हैं इनफैक्ट ये पोएम और इस सीरीज की कई सारी पोएम्स ऐसी हैं जिनमें आगा शाहिद अली फुल स्टॉप लगाकर अपनी पोएम को अंत नहीं करती हैं एंड दैट गोज ऑन टू शो दैट आगा शाहिद अली पोएम्स वर नो ड्रीम सीक्वेंसेस और मेमोरी सीक्वेंसेस वॉट इज अ मेमरी सीक्वेंस मेमरी सीक्वेंस आपकी मेमरी की तरह होती है समटाइम्स राइटर्स ट्राई टू यू नो इम्यूलेट और कॉपी द थॉट्स दैट दे हैव इन देयर माइंड एंड दे वांट टू रेप्लिकेट इट इन देयर क्रिएटिव राइटिंग तो आगा शाहिद अली क्या करते हैं वो अपने राइटिंग uh, uh, में जैसे कि आपके ख्याल होते हैं जैसे कि आपके ड्रीम्स होते हैं जैसे कि आपकी यू नो डे रेवरीज होती है यू नो दिन में बैठकर आप सोचते रहते हैं कि अच्छा ये हुआ फिर उसके बाद ये हुआ और ये हुआ और ये एंड देन यू जस्ट ट्रे लॉ देर इज नो प्रिसाइज एंडिंग टू योर थॉट्स और देर इज नो प्रिसाइज एंडिंग टू योर ड्रीम्स तो शाहिद अली एट दिस पॉइंट वॉज यू नो एक्सपेरिमेंटिंग विद दैट काइंड ऑफ राइटिंग this was not a very new idea it was used by earlier english poets like ts eliot and virginia woolf and james joyce it was called the stream of consciousness stream of consciousness ek technique thi jahan par wo apni consciousness ko apni chetna ko emulate karne ki copy karne ki koshish karte the apni writing mein to shuru ka agar aap poem padhe so i'll go back to those slides no you when you read the first three uh, um, stanzas they just two two lines and they come across um, very precise yes excuse me ma'am ma'am the meeting might be ending in a few seconds so please rejoin okay. after the meeting sure 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 okay 